Hi Leo, welcome to your February 2018 single and ready to mingle love reading. I kind of get embarrassed saying that because it sounds so cheesy, but uh, you know, you got to kind of be a little flashy, right? And that's just something that I like to do. Um, but anyway, I um, obviously this is for people who are looking for love and are not currently in a relationship, although you know, I just did a, did a reading where it seemed like for some people they're ready to mingle, but they might not be single. Um, so anyway, I'm going to just try to focus on, on uh, the single status. And I'm using the Wild Unknown Tarot for this uh, reading, which is a new deck of mine. This is what it looks like. Oh, I never got this card. Oh, this is so beautiful. But... Um, as I just stated in a former uh, video, I got a comment that um, someone said that they didn't like it because the cards don't connect to the meanings. And I know what they mean, but sometimes they do, though, and you have to think for a minute. But I just like the drawing so much that it, it kind of resonates with me. They feel good in my hand, and I like the, the I just like the, the way they lay out together. So um, I won't abandon my typical deck, but I do like to do some things that are different once in a blue moon. Speaking of blue moons, um, as I record this, we are awaiting the blue moon in Leo. It's actually blood moon, blue moon, super moon, uh, lunar eclipse, full lunar eclipse. So, um, Leo, this could affect you just in your general sense of yourself. And um, this could have consequences for months later. And so it may manifest for you in um, some, in, in the upcoming few months. So just be on the lookout for that. And then uh, mid-month, there's a, an Aquarius solar eclipse, and this is happening in your opposite house, the seventh house, uh, your opposite sign of Aquarius. So there could be relationship issues that come up for you in February um, that, it, you know, as I said, I'm doing this as a single reading, but I want to bring that up because if you were married or in some relationship, you may find out something about that person after the fact. And, uh, and even if you're like, you know, I'm sure there's going to be a few people watching this who are currently legally married or something like that. That could be kind of um, a time when something comes to light and that makes it easier for you to make your decisions. Okay, so I'm just, I've been shuffling them and just kind of just putting them in little piles and then I'm going to pick from the top. The only thing with these cards, maybe as I get to use them, they'll, 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 hey, that's that card that I got that I liked. Ah, Three of Cups, okay. Sorry, I hope I didn't yell too loud into the camera. Um, let's see, I'll pick this. And I'll tell you, because this is a special thread. Got the Father and Mother of Cups, which is Queen and King of Cups. And then the outcome. Wow, talk about cups. I'm going to pick another card because of the traditional meaning of the Four of Cups. I don't, some cards don't end on a decisive note. They're more like states of being. So, gosh, I've been getting the World card a lot. Okay. Alrighty then. Well, this is fun because some of these cards I haven't had before. Okay, so the um, the main this is this is the central challenge for you attracting love into your life. Gosh, I love that because you know that's your that you you know you're the sun, and it's I love how that looks. Oh, but anyway, um, this is the central challenge for you when it comes to finding love. Um, that you may notice that this is a little bit different spread. And uh, I do this just to kind of mix things up, but also to be kind of more instructional about, 
and instructional meaning getting you to think about other issues. Um, a lot of times people will present their single status as, oh gosh, I can't find anyone. And they're totally not connecting with their place in it. Like, what are they doing? What are they not doing that is contributing to their single status? And it could be even like the thoughts that you're thinking. If you get to be a certain age and you say, oh, there's nobody out there. Everybody's either, if they're not taken by now, you know that they're like bad news. But you're not taken either. So are you bad news? So, you know, it's like challenging those assumptions and that really create our reality in a lot of ways, okay? Okay, so the central challenge is represented by the Three of Cups. The Three of Cups is a card of socializing, okay? It's also a card, uh, and you see there's three parties. Well, you know, we can also say, because I did read that, which makes a lot of sense, is that if you have a tendency to find yourself in um, lover's triangles, like maybe you tend to be attracted to people who are married. That could be problematic. Why would somebody be attracted to somebody who's married? There are different reasons. One of them is they may not really want um, a deep relationship. They may be afraid of intimacy. Um, but, you know, and, and that's like a big one. I don't want to just make it that that's just such a small thing. A lot of people claim that they want a relationship, but they really don't. They're really afraid of it. And, of course, it's going to be something in their past that makes them not trust um, the romantic partner because of something that was done to them. So that's one thing. The other thing is... And I could see this with Leo. Some people, it's like they need to prove themselves. That's a form of insecurity, though. But um, I want to be the one who steals this person from the other person. Rivalry. And, you know, like a woman who has that mentality, her mother may have uh, done that with her and felt threatened by her when she was a teenager, when she was starting to... Uh, become attractive to the to the opposite sex and so she developed that because of her mother and does it herself so you know there's all kinds of reasons why people do what they do the other thing about the three of cups is you might be partying too much you might be um, hanging out in bars where people are drinking where you're drinking too much and go home with people um, having one night stands and not realizing that that's not the way to find of the love of your life. So um, the Three of Cups can also be about uh, somebody who is, so it could be about drinking too much and not having proper discernment about partners. It could be about, it could be that you are putting too much emphasis on the opinions of other people, like your your social circle, and not deciding who you're going to be with for yourself like you're just um someone who is um influenced by you know you want to impress other people by your you know by who who's on your arm and that's of course very shallow and you don't want to do that either you have to appreciate the person for who they are and want them for themselves so those could be things that are going around now let's look at the history the Son of Cups, which connects with the Knight of Cups. I don't know what that stuff is coming out of the cup, though. The, some of these cards are a little bit cryptic. Um, I'd like to, you know, write to the, the person who did this deck and find out what was going on in her mind. Like, you know, I mean, in a respectful way, you know, because I'm kind of curious. I'm sure she had some ideas. But anyway, um, the Knight of Cups is a man who is very romantic. Um, they, he can be very chivalrous and like the perfect, the, the white, you know, was it the, the knight on the white horse and all that stuff. And it could be somebody who's an artistic person. Um, there could be that you have this tendency, you may be attracted to a certain type of guy. That might be your type of guy. The, the singer-songwriter, the guy like that, and they tend to be all of these things, partying too much, doing, you know, 
being kind of not being grown-ups, being irresponsible, maybe they don't have um, steady work and they don't have what you have and that tends to make the relationship imbalanced um, and that sets it up for its own set of problems. But it could be too that you are too um, a attached to that that perfect fantasy Harlequin romance partner that you're not really appreciating the people that come into your life because they're they're not that type of person and that you need to um, kind of revise your expectations. How do you heal? Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords is a card of clarity of thought. And also, I would say with the Ace of Swords, is thinking about things in a new way. Your fixed sign, Leo, your Mercury will, there's a good chance it could also be in Leo. And that can lead to rigid ideas and getting in a rut mentally about what it is that you have, you know, expectations wise. And the Ace of Swords is about new beginnings in terms of how you think and really cutting through the illusion of, you know, what that Knight of Cups would re represent. Now, the Knight of Cups could be a specific person from your past too that kind of um, the one that got away, this this person that you're comparing everyone else to. And you have to start letting all of that go. And you might. I mean, with the eclipse, you might really be letting go of your past in a lot of ways. Okay, the fourth and fifth cards are who, what, when. This could be um, just kind of like, I like these. This is kind of fun. They're not so heavy talking about where can you meet this person, who could this person be. I got both the Father and Mother of Cups, which is the Queen and King of Cups. Um, I, I would say, depending on, this could be like in a spiritual setting. So if you're somebody who likes to go to uh, meditation workshops or retreats, you may meet somebody who is working on themselves like you are on yourself. And the, because with the cups energy, we're talking about emotions. And you have so many cups here. So what is bringing up emotions for Leo? Has it been because you've been, you know, you've had the North Node in your sign, you've had these eclipses, but things have been really stirring up for you. And you may feel like um, more tender emotionally. There can be with the Father of Cups, if you're looking for a man, this could be an older man who is possibly, you know, as a profession, they may be a counselor um, of some sort, or they can simply be a water sign or have a strong water in them, water presence in them, so Cancer, or Scorpio, you tend to be attracted to Scorpios, which is a fixed sign like you. And what's the other one? Pisces. And the outcome is, and also look for the time of the summer. Um, like there is a, there's an eclipse in Cancer that is happening for, you know, on July 12th, I think. And this is going to be in your 12th house. It's a solar eclipse. So there could be someone, some karmic, who knows, maybe some karmic relationship comes up that, you know, some a soulmate type of relationship that you start with a solar eclipse in your 12th house. So that is water energy. And the mother, Cancer is the mother. So maybe that's the timing of it. Okay, and so the outcome, we have the Four of Cups, which I never, <laughs> look at that. Is that, that's so grotesque and, and scorpionic. Even the moon is black, you know. Oh, it's creepy. And the Four of Cups connects with dissatisfaction. So that's why I don't end with it. But, you know, it doesn't have to because it also relates to 
stable emotions. Um, the number four connects with stability and foundation. So we could be talking about you with a water sign individual, actually. And also, this could be you um, becoming a lot more stable. See, notice how I started with the Three of Cups and we're ending with the Four of Cups. The Three of Cups is more like a party, celebration, celebratory energy. The Four of Cups is more serious and stable. Sometimes it can indicate dissatisfaction within a relationship. But in your case, it could be that you have realize that you need to uh, find someone that isn't necessarily going to be the life of the party, which, you know, you're a Leo, you, you rule the fifth house, it deals with parties and fun, stuff like that. And Leos tend to be larger than life, and they may gravitate towards people who exemplify that, but it can be uh, a rather frivolous connection unless there is something deeper there. And that's what I think is that you're getting more serious about this. And actually, looking at it astrologically too, you have had Saturn in that fifth house. So you were getting very um, serious about like picking the right person. And now um, I just want to tell you, towards the end of 2018, you're going to have Jupiter in Sagittarius. So you're going to have all kinds of choices if you feel like, oh gosh, when am I going to meet the, that this person? Um, so the world card was also a card that I picked. And again, I, I picked it, sometimes it's in the um, what's going to happen, but even as the outcome, you may find somebody from a different walk of life, a different culture especially, or if you're traveling, it could be uh, on your travels. But it, it's also about tying up unfinished business in your life. And, um, you know, when you have that solar eclipse in the summer, it'll be in that 12th house, but that's a new moon in Cancer. So um, it's right before you have your solar return, okay? So... You, that might be the timing of all of this, where you're kind of wrapping things up, and then as you head into your um, your birthday time, your your new moon in August, that you can really feel that sense of moving forward. I'm sure some of you can find love way before that, though. Um, you know, obviously this is just a general reading, but I wanted to kind of uh, put that out there as a possibility that maybe even if you want to start a new relationship, maybe there are things that you still have to do in order to get there. Okay, Leo, hope you enjoyed this and all the best to you. If you'd like a private reading, my link is below. Have a great February. Bye.